Hi, Gender Queer Chat. It's Cole here. This week's topic deals with helping others. And the topic reads, what advice would you give to someone just starting out on their gender journey? What lessons have you learned along the way that would be of benefit to a brand new gender queer? Or what do you wish someone had told you? Okay, wonderful, wonderful question, Matt. All right, first of all, um, what I would tell you is um, just because you're outside of the gender binary does not mean you have a mental disorder. Um, just like uh, people in the uh, lesbian and gay community were um, accused of having mental disorders that needed to be cured, um, I, in my opinion, I believe that's the same thing with trans people um, and genderqueer people. I do not think that it is a mental disorder to be who you are. Um, I know that's still the way that it's kind of approached, at least in the States. Um, and I think it's kind of ludicrous. So personally, I want to tell you, I don't think you're sick or have a mental disorder or need to be fixed. I think that all you need to do is become, you know, wholly you, complete. And if that means hormones or, or surgery or whatever, then that's what that means. But that doesn't mean that you have a mental disorder. It just means you're becoming, um, who you are more fully. So I know that trying to ignore um, your questions and inquiries about your own gender will only make your dysphoria worse. Um, you have to try to deconstruct um, gender, your own gender. You have to start small and start deconstructing it and picking it apart and figuring out where do I fit in in this this um, I just I really think of it as a, as a spectrum you know where do I fit in on the spectrum and and how do I identify um, but yes again take it really slowly you know there's no reason to rush um, your deconstruction of gender um, but you have to start trying to do that or your dysphoria will just take over you know everything about you all you'll do is obsess about it um, just because you're genderqueer does not mean that you only have to identify with that specific label. I know that if you watched Keenan's video, I believe last week, um, last week, yeah, I think it was last week, um, he, he talked about how he identifies as all these different things that don't necessarily fit on the transgender queer spectrum, as such as the word butch, things like that, that is typically um, associated with the lesbian community, but does does that mean that he can't identify that way because he's trans? Absolutely not. You know, I just, I would, I wish someone would have told me, you have the freedom, being genderqueer, to fit in wherever you feel that you fit in best or where, what you are allowed to identify, however you feel fits you most. And even if that maybe doesn't make sense to others or um, people in other communities, that doesn't matter. Because what matters is being comfortable with yourself and being okay with fitting into different places and um, not necessarily giving in to any kind of social norm that may be in place. Um, you can also present any way you like. And I know that I think Matt mentioned this and maybe even Jack in the video, how there's so much diversity on gender queer chat. I mean, all of us look different. Some of us are androgynous. Some of us are really not as much. Um, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you feel inside and how you portray yourself as a person. What you're wearing, how much makeup you have on or don't have on, whether or not you're androgynous makes no difference. It's however you feel the absolute most comfortable. If you feel comfortable being visible, I personally like being visible. I think that it you know, raises questions. I think people are interested because it's not typical. So I, I like it, but that doesn't make anyone else less genderqueer because they don't present an androgynous way. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about looking, being genderqueer enough, being trans enough, doesn't matter. You know, just be you to the fullest. Being genderqueer does not have to affect you being in a happy relationship. Um, I know that it's more complicated explaining these types of things to a potential partner. 
in a relationship in which you can be yourself fully and you can express your gender in any way that you see fit. It's a, it's such a freeing relationship because you don't have to sit and obsess over, am I being cis enough? Am I being cisgendered enough in this relationship? And, you know, sexually, am I doing the right things? You don't have to do that when you're with someone that accepts you as you are, as genderqueer, and is happy and celebrates that with you. Um, my girlfriend now celebrates the fact that I'm genderqueer. She loves me so much for that. That's something that she really enjoys. And I've never been in a relationship like that before. So from personal experience, I can say that you don't have to give up a relationship or love because you're genderqueer or trans. Because you want someone that wants you fully for who you are. Um, being genderqueer does not have to affect being successful. Um, I think that if you work extremely hard in whatever you do, you know, and you, you know, work your way up in your job or go to school or whatever you choose to do, that being genderqueer has no bearing on whether or not you're going to be successful. It might it be harder if you're androgynous or if you're trans. Um, absolutely, it would probably be harder in some ways, but that does not mean that it affects whether or not you're successful. If society doesn't like what you're doing, start your own business. I mean, there's many, many things you can do to be successful. And I think that like this semester, I did well in school. I earned a certain level on my vocal performance because I worked really hard on that. And everybody, all the teachers in school know I'm genderqueer. And they, they're the ones who give the, the levels and all of that. They could have been like, oh, we don't understand. So we're going to not let you be successful. But you find, you know, that if people see that you're passionate about what you're doing and that you care, being genderqueer, it's just such a small part of who you are that people generally just look past it because it's not important. I mean, it is important to you to figure that out, but it's not important in the bigger scheme of society. If you're confident in yourself and you work hard, I really believe that. Um, another thing that you don't, that being genderqueer does not affect is having close friendships with people that are not genderqueer. Um, now, unfortunately, some people might reject you when you come out as genderqueer. Not every single person is going to understand where you're coming from at first. Give it time. In my life, there have been several people that have not really understood the genderqueer issue with me. And then and they kind of rejected me in a way, didn't really want to get close to me for a while. And then they thought it over, got educated, and came back around. And now are some of my best friends and family members. So I encourage you to not lose hope. You know, even if you feel like people will reject you, know that if they really love you and they really want to be in your life, they will come back around to you and they will make it up to you in some way. Um, and also you'll meet so many people, so many new people that will enrich your life so much um, that are love gender issues. They might not have gender issues, but they love to talk about it. They're inquisitive. They're they're they have beautiful outlooks on life that you can learn from, you know. You want those kind of people in your life anyway. You don't need people in your life that are going to bring you down and, you know, tell you that your identity isn't um, real. That's very hurtful. And I know that it's hurtful. And it's been probably said to all of us on the channel at one point or another. And I think it is one of the most hurtful things you can hear is that, you know, you're invalidated. But I just want to give you validation right now and tell you that if you feel like you're genderqueer or trans, you are. And it's up to you to decide who you are and how you're going to express yourself. So go out there, be yourself, have a great time doing it, and I will see you next week. Bye.